Well, welcome to another super cool repair video from the Goat Shed. Today is Thursday, the 22nd of December, 2022. We're almost at our year's end and we've been doing some videos on our lightning ball that we got. So we decided that what we'd do is we'd pull the motorboard out of the game and have a little bit of a look and see what needed doing. So we decided that the bottom board needed uh, redoing. So we'll clean that up and we'll paint that so it comes up and looks nice. And we're now pulling each relay apart so we can do all the frames. Now the frames are pretty dirty. We're gonna put them in the ultrasonic cleaner, give them a scrub and give them a clean. And what we'll do, um, some years ago, I bought a brother P-Touch machine just before I retired. Well, I'll be honest, I didn't buy it. I owned the company, so I, I took it. And I've never used it, so I'm going to use that to make new labels for here. So we'll, we'll do that toward the end. Now, have a look here. Here's the armature plate off one of the relays. That was the hold relay. It's not too bad, but we'll get the, we'll get the flapping tool and clean that up. These aren't scoring relays. We did those scoring relays the other day. But we're doing the, the works on this game. So we've got the uh, wiring loom. We'll get some isopropyl and a brush and give that all a clean. And hopefully that'll look good. And we're going to pull the score motor right apart and um, clean that all up as well. Now... These score motors are screwed on from underneath. So there's the, the board we're going to um, coat, paint, I should say. So we'll sand that down and paint it. And the score motor screws in up here. That's where it goes. And the screws go in from underneath. So um, there's the screws there in the motor we've just put back in. Can you see that there? There they are. Yeah, Spanky's all excited. We're going to pull the score motor down. He's fell over. Oh dear, I think he might have drank too much Spanky last night. Yeah, dear me. Um, so, yeah, we'll get stuck into that. Now, okay, we'll just get that out of the road. This is a relatively easy motorboard to work on. Relatively easy. Now, the well, first thing we found... Um, we've found a couple of bad solder joints. We, we, remember we discussed these the other day from probably late from 58 to about 62, maybe 63. And apparently they changed the coating on the switch blades and it gave way to solder breaking away. Now the same thing happened with machines around Sure Shot. So Sure Shot's what, 76? Something like 76 that. 76, plus the, um, the, the inserts come out on that as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, the inserts do fall out on sure shot, if you heard Graham say that. So, got a little bit of work ahead of us here. It's not hard work. There's another another one coming up. And... Yep, yeah, we'll take the... You see how I put a bit of cardboard to know where the spacer is? Yeah, so let's have a look at that. What Graham's saying is... He's put a bit of cardboard in here, so you know where the, so you know where the switch baser goes, so, just in so, case you... So that should have been in like that. All right, so, that, so you don't get confused. Yeah, that's just a little trick we use. I mean, we do so many of these machines, well, not wood rails, but so many pinball machines, we just, we've got our own little ways we work. And so be it, that's, that's what we do. Um, with the score motor, what we're going to do, we're going to pull the shaft of it out, and I'll show you that in just a moment. That's not too hard to do. And we want to clean the score motor frame, so we're going to take all the switch stacks off. And we're going to polish the actual motor. Now this particular motor, remember score motors have two styles of shaft that go through the centre. There's a thinner and a thicker shaft. This one's probably got, let's have a look. This one's got the smaller shaft. They they made the shaft a bit thicker over the mm -hmm. over the years. And just notice uh, here, the switch dog that's switched at two. The switch dog is in the long throw position. 
And what we'll also do, we'll check to make sure no spaces are missing on each stack as we do them. We found a few spaces missing in the back box as we were doing that. And just remember everybody, we're looking at the score motor from an op the opposite end. There's the motor itself. Diagonal to the motor is always stack one, stack two, stack three, stack three and a half, and stack four. Fairly easy to remember. Or find stack three and a half. That's the one with no wires attached to it. That's the motor brake. And remember the switches go in the clockwise direction but the motor turns in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so we're commencing to pull that score motor apart. There's Graham on the job there. First of all, he's just removing the switch stacks individually. There you go, he's putting a bit of cardboard in there because it's a space switch. Now the other thing we're going to have to do while he's doing that is the hold, or our relay has had it. So we're going to have to replace that. That's got a number on it. I'll have a look. Hopefully it'll equivalent is 9738. But I'm sure we'll have one, so we've got to do that. All takes time. So see what he's doing there. He's putting the screw back in to hold it all together while we're doing that job. Makes it a bit easier. So we know where it goes when we put it back together. And plus um, we're on level um, B. So I'll put a little B on that tag. So what he's saying, it's on cam level B, that switch. So that looks like... It's stack three. So I just put a B on it. Okay, so we know where it goes. We've actually taken photos of this. And we'll put it through on B, even though we know. It's just the insurance in case we we'll lose the plot. Yeah, because we probably won't be getting on to this <coughs> now till after Christmas again. So each of those stacks come off. Once again, it's not rocket science. It's very easy to do. But putting them back where they came from is the important part. Uh, that's why it is important to take photos. And ones that haven't got nuts, you've got to put them around with tape. Yeah, to hold them together. Yeah. All right, well, we'll just carry on with that and um, remember what we said. He's under stack two there now. That switch dog has to go in the long throw position. Now, we know that because all those switch dogs and carriers are going to come off and they're going to go and get cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner also. And while we've got those off, we'll make sure that the dog themselves aren't grooved and worn. If they are, we will replace them. That is important it can throw the the switches out a little bit if they get particularly grooved and or they break he's still working away there all right we've successfully removed the um, switch stacks from the score motor frame now next job is we've got the 332nd Allen key by the look of that and we're just going to undo the Allen screw loosen that up and there we go off it comes now note the shaft itself is flat and there's only one screw in there and what we'll do when we get this out we'll get the file and file that down now there's two screws on the top three three yep normally on the later score motors they have the holes through the tops of the cam. Everyone's probably seen those. But these don't because they're older games. So they changed that in later years. So this is actually going to remove the frame from the motor. Once again, fairly simple job. We don't do this every day, but some days when we are so inclined. And there we are, we have one frame nice and filthy now that's going to go on the ultrasonic cleaner and be cleaned up so there's the actual motor itself cams and the cams go in so there's the there's the score motor itself now we'll have a look um and we will see what we've got to do 
and to clean that up. So this has been pulled apart before. It has the screws in the top. Remember normally there, I think it's um, 3 8 of an inch brass tubing, but they've got screws. So we might actually yeah, so they've done something to it see it's... what's going on there. There's no nuts there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's a, they've done done something. So what we'll check that yeah. out. Now remember, it's very important to get that armature, which you can't quite see, but the armature's here. Get Graham to hold that up so we can see the armature. We're out of shot. Let's come over. Yeah, there it is. It's very important that armature moves freely, and that one is. It's pretty good. So we'll clean that score motor up and lubricate it. and fine tune it. So on the other side there, we've got all the ball roll, tilt, yeah. other fuse they're not too bad, they're holders not. and everything. So there should be three of those, there is. Mm -hmm. And we've got to do that. Now, then we've got to put it all back together, but cleaning is going to take a while. So we'll clean it right up and we'll show you the results of our cleaning before we reassemble it. Well, here we're carrying on with the refurbishment of this motorboard. We're actually doing the, the timber itself now. So we've got the uh, sander out and we're just scraping off that gum from around where the transformer sits. Otherwise it's gonna clog up the, the sandpaper. There's Spanky there having a look at the work. And then what we'll do, uh, we'll give it a coat of clear varnish. Now I'll just show you that clear varnish. So that's what we use. Oh, and I forgot to mention too, today it's um, 18 degrees Celsius, which is about 64 odd degrees Fahrenheit. And it's a partly cloudy day. So with the sanding completed, we'll be able to coat this and we'll do the other little board that holds the tilt stuff on it. That's all done. Oh, we've done it. There you go. It's all done. It's ready to be, it's ready to be painted. And, um, well, hopefully we'll be able to get that out to dry. It rained a little bit there about 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. So hopefully we won't get any more rain and away we go. So the sanding process is very simple. So that's all prepared now and good to go. So um, just give it a bit of a dust off there and uh, we're ready to uh, apply the, uh, the, clear the clear, the clear varnish. It's gloss by the way, you probably saw that on the... But we use the satin when we do the cabinets. Yeah. So there's the um, paint being applied the clear varnish. How many coats, Graham? Oh, see how it looks, maybe just the one. Okay. Two if necessary. That shouldn't take very long to dry either, even though it's a overcast day. Yeah. It's the sort of timber that, that won't soak in real good, so we'll probably get away with only the one one coat. So apparently with all this timber was um work in Gottlieb games was carried out by a firm in Chicago August Johnson, I believe it was, um, made the cabinets, obviously provided these boards, drilled the holes in the positions they were told. I see where the two different timbers. And yeah, we notice it's sort of two different types of timber here, two different, totally different grains. Very, very weird. But remember that, how old it is? 63 years old. They well, saved money even back then. There you go. Can't recall if we already showed you that um, relay frame all cleaned and polished. Almost looks new, which is pretty good, isn't it? Look lovely. The only place we couldn't really get into is in here. But of course, a coil will cover that. So it looks really nice. Both sides. The armature plate's all done. Springs all nice and clean and tight, so that looks pretty good. One thing we found 
it's been repaired now, but when I, you hold, held the cam in your hand like this, there was movement that way. Not a lot, only a couple of millimetre, but, you know, it would have been enough to probably cause problems. So what we did, we um, we just got a, a, a punch, just punched around the edge a bit. Yeah. That didn't really fix it. So then we just put it in a vise and squeezed it. When we did that, um, this hole here wasn't um, quite right. So we just had to get a drill and run through it a few times so it went back on the on the shaft okay. Haven't seen that before, but once again, it's old, so that fixed it. Remember these motors, the teeth, level A, the studs, level B, and the cam edge, level C. Now, being an early 50s or late 50s game, there's no level D or E where the poles would stick up out of the cam that this way. Okay, so this is the hard buffing wheel we've got fitted to this now. Uh, you can see the, the soap there that needs to be applied to it. And um, we're pretty well ready to go. What's up next, Graham? Score motor frame. Um, we'll do the frame and then we've got to do probably the cam. Okay. The more of these bloody... Yeah, plenty to do. Just never ended. So we'll start her up. You won't be able to hear much now. And uh, I think everyone's seen someone buff something. Graham's got his safety glasses on. And he's ready to go. Well, okay. We've pretty well finished cleaning up all the parts. Everything looks nice and clean and shiny. And now we'll proceed to put it all back together. We did find a problem with... The relay here, which is the reset relay. Um, sadly, pretty well every wire fell off it. Remember we were talking about that earlier on? So we've had to um, redo all those, solder them all back on. Uh, obviously use the schematic and um, just to double check that, we a, a, a friend in the USA, Dave Lipinski, was kind enough to send me a photo of the of his relay so we could just double check it to be on the safe side so thanks for that Dave much appreciated the score motors screwed back onto the frame now we're going to have to transfer everything over onto the board so really that's just going to be a matter of lifting up all those wires and shoving everything uh, shoving the board under it and then we'll screw all the switch stacks back onto the score motor all, every switch has been cleaned with the Dremel. Yeah, if you look closely, you should be able to see some of those uh, switches are clean over there. Look at them shine down in there. Can you see those there? They've all been cleaned. You can see them. Every switch. Now remember, when you do that, it also helps you to see if a switch uh, a switch blade pad is spinning in other words it's not pressed to the switch blade itself any longer and spins around you get bad ones of those all sorts of problems will happen you know the it loses power and all sorts of things so that's a good way to check those as well with the score motor itself we have now cleaned all the switch dogs and switch dog carriers, so they'll go back in. I think what particularly look good are the the uh, relays here. They all came up really nicely. I think we've got the whole relay uh, that. 10,000 point relay I think it is and the hold relay up the back there notice on the hold relay it's round the other way because the the style of um, coil was slightly different so we just had to reverse that round not that that's a big deal we've still got to hook the common up there we might we'll probably do that when we get it back on the board the wiring loom cleaned up fairly nicely. 
it's not perfect but it's a lot cleaner than it was I could probably get a little bit of warm water and and soap and do a better job uh, but yeah I, I think we're happy with that it's mainly so we can see the wires on the relays rather than in the loom it's not a not a great importance just a little bit of housekeeping so let's get this back on the board all right now we've got the board on the edge of the table and all we're going to do is just slowly move everything onto the board it's not difficult and you know you can happily do this on your own The good news about this is that it's only a small motor board. The other transformer's nearly on. Score motor. There you go. Right. Now we can start screwing everything down. Now one of the first things we'll probably do is screw the score motor. Um, we'll bolt the transformer down and screw the score motor in from underneath this So what we'll be able to do with that we'll be able to pull the board over to the edge and come up from underneath and just screw the screws up from underneath rather than tip it over Just like that We we screwed those screws into the bottom there countersunk screws so we didn't misplace them. We've got all the screws here in a um, in a container. So he's just lining that up, and in they go. So who said the life of a pinball mechanic isn't difficult? One's got to climb under the floor. It's like having a car jacked up on a hoist. Now, the next thing we'll do is the heavier, other heavy thing is the transformer. It's the same. There's four screws that come up from underneath. And that's those there. Countersunk as well. And they've got a, uh, a washer and a spring washer on them. It goes in the top. So already it even looks like it's almost back together, doesn't it? So we'll turn this around the other way now and we'll do the transformer. Here we go. Now it's good as gold. That just gives you a better view of the score motor itself. We even took the counter out and polished it. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? So, you know, the time taken to do this just makes the job look so much neater. And really, it hasn't taken long at all. I'd say to sand down the um, the board and the, the other board, the tilt bob board, and, and paint them collectively, half hour, All the parts were cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner, as we mentioned. And then how we get the shine on these, we put them on the buffing wheel. And that buffing wheel is the hard wheel. I think we mentioned that already. So there you go. The transformer's almost screwed down now. So those two heavier and more awkward things are now bolted down and won't move. Obviously, we're going to have to um, screw all the relay frames down and uh, carry on with any switch adjustments on the relays. We'll, we'll double check that and see how we go from there. So it's looking good so far. Right, so there's the job is now completed. So with a little bit of effort, we've made a dirty, filthy old motorboard into a fairly nice looking piece of equipment clear-coated the board itself 
cleaned everything up let's just pan very slowly up and have a look cleaned all the relays cleaned the score motor and we've done the actual tilt board so um, we'll have a look at the tilt board now there it is with the fuses and now the middle fuse there someone had soldered the wires together for some unknown reason um, so we'll have to investigate that when we get it all back together I have mentioned that this is a project in the making we won't finish this till next year we are hoping to take it to our annual pin fest which is uh, about the third week in September I think so anyone will be welcome to come and play it and uh, enjoy a game from 1959 now it wouldn't be fair to end the year without Spanky wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous new year the last few years have been somewhat difficult for a lot of people some people have been lonely some people have been financially ruined because of this insidious disease it's pretty well touched everybody but hopefully now world travel has commenced again and it seems to be getting busier and busier the airlines are putting on more flights perhaps we're getting close to the end of it who knows but all we can do here in the goat shed is carry on with our little hobby repairing and restoring these wonderful old electromechanical pinball machines and what we can do now is remind you to subscribe to our channel and many already have we have over 1500 subscribers now we never thought we'd get over 100 keep liking our videos this will be our last video for this year there'll be no more we don't resume working out of the 3rd of january we're just waiting on a few parts to come in so spanky says this has been another goat shed presentation <laughs> <laughs>